Liz Hamlet and welcome to the next episode of How to Spark Success podcast. This is where I have conversations with savvy and successful business owners um, and we get to know some of their success secrets. So today I'm delighted to be joined from Perth by Carlo Guzzi. Um, Carlo is the owner of Epic Story, of uh, Epic Copywriting and he is an expert in unleashing the power of storytelling and indirect persuasion to get you more clients so welcome Carlo it's fantastic to have you join me today yeah thanks for having me Liz yeah it's a pleasure so um Carlo can you tell us a bit about your journey to where you are today you know um all the sort of different things what I'm finding is guests have had really interesting journeys to reach their sort of current role and businesses that they're running so um what's your your career story well, I did, uh, yeah, it's an interesting story. Uh, I did run a uh, small family business, which was a tile importing um, venture. So, yeah, ran that for 23 years. So, yeah, it was pretty much doing that for all that period of time. And, yeah, it was very um, interesting. We started from the ground. So we started that from scratch. It wasn't a business we brought. We just pretty much from the start. So it was... Um, yeah, a lot of hard work, but uh, yeah, like all good things, they come to an end. So 2013, yeah, I did uh, go back into workforce and work for other companies. So I worked in mining and filtration and stainless steel industry. And then somewhere along the mine, um, or in my mind, um, something was knocking, <laughs> knocking at me to do something different. So the copywriting sort of developed, uh, but yeah, developed before I um, got out of my business. So, and yeah, I did a number of courses uh, between say 2015 to 2017. So yeah, it was a bit of a big career shift. And a lot of people ask me, why did I go from say tiles to that? But I, I like to try things out, but yeah, well, I did something for a very long time. So, to me, it was just natural to try something different for a change. Yeah, and you obviously, with the tile in, um, company, you were sort of involved in sales and a sort of element of marketing there. So um, what sort of services do you offer your clients now through um, Epic Copywriting? Uh, it's, it, I mean, there's a number of services, but yeah, it's mainly everything to do with the written word. So it's, uh, you know, sales letters, blog posts, um social media type campaigns you know um yeah and also posting on social media i mean just anything brochures yeah you name it brilliant um and so you know looking back at um your sort of changes in your career and you know where you are now what would you say has been the biggest factor in uh, that's helped you become successful I uh, just think it's just resilience, really, because I didn't really, I suppose I didn't really plan this. And then when you when you do something when you're older, it's more or less like your uh, determination, or I suppose, faith. But uh, there's been times where I didn't think I would uh, succeed. But, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a long journey. But, yeah, it's just that kind of, you got to continually invest in yourself to uh, keep that belief up because... The experience that I had before, whilst it was beneficial, it's not really going to get you over the line. It's that really self-development, um, you know, courses, hiring a coach. Um, that's very critical to uh, ongoing success. Brilliant. And so, um, you're working with a coach at the moment, are you? Yeah, yeah. I've uh, been working with him for some time. So, yeah, it's been very beneficial because, yeah, he has such a um, large... A global network and yeah I try and write off his kind of tidal wave I guess of success. <laughs> and what do you think sort of been some of the learnings through the coaching for you um, in business and personally? It's just little things because I'm always looking for the big idea but it's just little things that he would um, suggest to me like starting a, a networking group whilst uh, I did do that in the past, but I, I took his suggestion more seriously. So it's, it's just little suggestions. You don't think they're sort of big biggies, but uh, it's just, they, yeah, it's just they can see blind spots, perhaps is the best way of looking at it. 
Yeah, and it's often, yeah. you know, marginal gains. It's not like whole tidal shifts often. It's those small gains that, you know, will affect and improve what you're doing, you know, day to day or week to week, month to month that can really make that difference to you. Um, and do you feel like you're a more confident leader yourself through the coaching? I think what it has done is brought back to me where I was before when I was a business owner because I kind of lost that kind of leadership that sort of self-belief. So I went from that to working for other people. So I was working essentially under other people while, yeah, that was a challenge in itself, but you kind of lose that decision-making aspect. But if anything, just um, hiring the right coaches uh, reignited that kind of self-belief and leadership. So I think it was there, um, but a good coach uh, just nurtures people along their journey. But, but I never set out to be like an influencer on, on LinkedIn. I just, I just see it as I'm just helping people. Yeah. yeah. And that's sort of that type of what you're doing on the sort of copywriting and sort of, you know, helping people write persuasive, you know, I like that sort of the indirect persuasion. So, you know, you're not like dragging people into sort of buying. It's sort of more a sort of cajoling. Is that correct? Is that how you would describe it? Yeah, indirect persuasion is basic. Well, storytelling is a part of indirect persuasion. So there's about four elements. Uh, but yeah, storytelling is obviously, it's a big, it's a very busy thing now. And But it's not new. But yeah, storytelling is just a way of um, telling a story about your products or services and how like your story is relevant to your prospects. So it's kind of, that kind of old style BS hit people over the head, like three closes, that's out. Yep. So it's all about, yeah, like you said, nurturing people and storytelling is a good way to nurture people because, you know, kids and everybody likes stories. It's just easy to get people's attention that way. Yeah, and I think, you know, what you were saying about the um, storytelling, because one of my previous guests, Bianca Pananti, she's a um, psychologist in Italy, and part of her um, therapy that she's doing with people that have been really um, successful is about writing an autobiography with them. You know, they don't come away at the end of the treatment with notes. They end up taking away their autobiography. And she was saying how sort of powerful that can be, one, in treatment, but also in sort of business, um, you know, building your brand. And people really... Really like to know the sort of origin of where the brands come from you know your journey you know that's why I've loved um, interviewing all these different guests for the podcast because everyone's got such an interesting story and sort of you know the path leads them to all sorts of places before they arrive at where they are so do you feel where you're you know what you're doing now do you feel sort of like this you can really be yourself and you know show your personality yeah, well, that, that's what this business is about, really. Um, it's really about sort of my journey instead with the family business. It was like I wasn't forced into it, but it was so, it was like an obligation because that's, um, that's a strong thing in, in Italian culture. So it's kind of, yeah, it's that obligation and you do everything you do out of obligation. But the... Um, the epic copyright, that's just all my, it's just all my, I suppose, ego and all my passion goes into it. So it's a bit different and, yeah, when you're working, family, it's, and you've heard of father, daughter, father and sons, like sports, yeah, relationships yeah. where a tennis player said they only did it or a swimmer said he only did it for, um, to please his sort of parents. So I think this in a sense, while it's been a difficult journey, I'm, I'm kind of pleasing myself. I think maybe that comes out, I come out as a motivating person. That's what the feedback I get from LinkedIn followers. So it's just, I suppose, yeah, that's what I, that's who I am or what I've become now. Amazing. And in terms of sort of your day-to-day -day sort of weekly habits, what would you say are your success habits? Uh, well, I've had to improve lately because uh, it has become overwhelming since COVID before the Zoom meetings. Well, I will love doing those, but they can be overwhelming. So I've had to do right down. I've got this from a UK friend. She's a productivity expert. She said, don't call it a to-do list, have an achievement list. Oh, I love that. So, so every, for the last two weeks, and it's really helped uh, improve my productivity. 
up. That's great. And yeah, because I think that to-do list can seem like a real chore. And, you know, what I often talk to clients about is, you know, like actually have, you know, maybe just three to five things in a day that you want to achieve. Not, you know, so many people, you know, and me included sometimes when it gets busy, you have this like never ending to-do list with like 30 things on that you think, oh, I'll get those ticked off today. <laughs> it's just not yeah. achievable. So I think sort of pacing, particularly at the moment, pacing is really important where, you know, we can get a bit burnt out. There's not the separation between um, home life and work life. You know, maybe that commute gives us just a bit of time sort of deprogram and, you know, um, decompress before we get home. And we don't have that at the moment. So I think that's that's great. I love that. The achievement list. I'll, I'll have to try that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's um, definitely helpful. But I think it's just I think the, the uh, advice to give to the audience is just um, just more like take action. So it doesn't have to be a major thing, but you're just small things, just achieve them. And even if you don't write them, just sort of take action. Yeah, amazing. Just keep that direction of keep moving forward. Yeah, it's like on LinkedIn sometimes I think, oh, should I post this or shouldn't I? But I'll still post it anyway. So just always be curious and don't be scared to sort of, you know, when it comes to things like social media to, um, you know, just post something, whatever's on your mind. Because I think people, it's becoming like a new sort of channel now, most mm -hmm. platforms. Yeah, brilliant. So um, sort of looking back um, at your career journey, your life, if you could do it all over again, what would you do differently? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, it would be nice to go back, but obviously, like, yeah, I mean, it would have been still good to have done the family business, but it would have been better to have gone in, um, had sort of some mentorship with that because it's, it's different working for your parents and then having a, an outside mentor. So I think that was the, the biggest mistake. So I probably didn't have a lot of, I had knowledge of business, but yeah, if I had to go back, just have more business education, but yeah, if anything, probably I would have, like to have done a business from scratch from a long time ago so yeah, yeah. So those sort yeah. of things so you can always do things better in hindsight but the experience is helpful but yeah. I can yeah. tell there's always an easier way that's why retrospect is is marvelous yeah and I think you know that that's coming out in a lot of my guests is often when they're sort of saying you know what would I do differently if I could start all over again and often it's like I would have trusted my instincts sooner I would have like you know known that my plan that I had was good and sort of to take that first step or you know to leave a job that I wasn't um totally happy with so I think you know that yeah is, yeah you know yeah, I totally agree with them uh, I wish that I'd left jobs um like sooner and even even that business I wish that I'd actually um kind of sold it sooner or you know more believing in myself yeah. when I was younger it's more that confidence I wish that that's probably the main thing is mindset. Mm. And I think that does, I mean, part of that comes with sort of experience and sort of getting a bit older. Um, but I think, you know, just taking action and not worrying so much and sort of taking that first step, I think, is a theme that definitely has come out um, in, you know, from my guests that I've been speaking to and clients as well. So, so um, for you, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received on sparking success? Uh, look, I've, um, I used to be really uh, uh, junky into self-development. So I used to go to a, uh, it was a local store that they had all the CD, you know, uh, videos. So I used to watch those, you know, it was uh, Dale Carnegie type motivation uh Brian Tracy was another one, and there's Dennis Whaley. I was really big into them. So, but yeah, this the big thing about sparking. I think it's all about believing in yourself. So sometimes just don't listen to those inner voices. But we are all influenced by family, so they they're always scared, make us feel scared um, to achieve success. So I think it's good to listen to other people, but you've got to really set your own um agenda or goals but i think that's the only thing is but also um if you do a lot of self-development you still got to believe in yourself i think that can only get you so far but 
but yeah, just believe in yourself and have a go. But you've obviously got to be surrounded by like-minded people to achieve success. That's the key. Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, from all I've been um, listening to some of the other podcasts that you've been on, and I know that you know when you started out, you did a lot of research in terms of what um, posts and content was getting the best engagement and you know um, the most popular. So, um, in terms of sort of those listening today, have you got any tips for sort of creating sort of eye catching and sort of attention grabbing content um, to promote their brands and services? I think you just got to uh, be in the moment. So with your thoughts and sometimes a post that I put a lot of thought into and spend three quarters of an hour analyzing it and editing and changing it, I uh, didn't necessarily do better than a random thought that I had. So um, yeah, there's been a couple of went really well. So like short text posts, but yeah, the main thing is variety. Yeah. Uh, like that's worked on LinkedIn. So short text post uh, video uh, is usually quite good. And uh, yeah, there are some longer term posts, but I think, yeah, also sharing other people. So, but yeah, just be community minded and that definitely helps you get noticed. But generally spur of the moment stuff does work. Um, so I think it people are after personality when it comes to, personal branding so be yourself and um yeah that that would be the best advice i'd i'd give yeah and you know there's a lot of um sort of linkedin as perhaps if they come from a corporate role and then maybe they've now started um a business that they're sort of saying well i you know i use linkedin to just connect with people that i've worked with or you know so they've got a very small following you know one of the things i'm trying to encourage them to do is do that online networking whether that's a you know networking like we've been to you know um, and it's sort of international networking group um, or, um, you know, one to one, just sort of connecting up with people that um, sort of doing interesting stuff in the same field or, you know, people that are your ideal clients. So I think, you know, really that community minded and extending your network and also sort of being proactive. So not just posting and just waiting for things to happen, you know, um, commenting on other people's posts, sharing other people's articles, you know, that are along the same vein as your own. Um, and also when people engage in your posts, um, you know, like that you're, you're actually responding to those and sort of having that um, active engagement. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's all about interacting with people and it's, I've, um, well, particularly I hired a particular coach, Edward Zier, because he was a LinkedIn, uh, very influential. So that, that was my plan when I joined him. And so I've sort of stuck to the plan. And whilst the plan works, it's like really a lot of, um, you've actually got to put the effort in, like you said, like interacting with other people and sharing, commenting. And yeah, just as long as you do a number of, activities um but yeah the results if someone just came from a, a cushy um corporate job to sort of doing the linkedin uh, journey it um it may be a shock in the system that you know because results do take time but i think if you're um enthusiastic about, about your journey then that's really more important but yeah just yeah just always like they say sharing is caring but yeah linkedin linkedin's changed but since Microsoft brought them out, so it does. Um, it do, definitely makes life a lot easier now. It's not. It's not seen as so corporate anymore. Mm, brilliant. Yeah. And any sort of for the um, people watching and listening today, have you got any final words before we close off? Uh, yeah. I mean, just um, yeah. The final words could be just believe in yourself. Uh, but yeah, just respect your mind, body, and spirit as well, because obviously we're living in uh challenging time so yeah just do the social media stuff it, it can be um beneficial it can be draining but yeah just make sure you look after yourself like get plenty of exercise drink plenty of water so it's just getting that balance that's right because we're all chasing success but at the same time we've got to be um happy within ourselves and so then our body can function so um it's more a philosophical statement i made but but uh, yeah, just but yeah, just always be thinking of other people, and I think you'll get noticed. And yeah, that's how I've been um, receiving good uh, connections of late. Like 
because yeah, you just got to put yourself out there, but don't don't expect that people have to return the favour. But yeah, it does take time. But just do things with the right intention is my final word. Right. And I think you know exactly what you said about. I think it is that sort of oxygen mask thing on the um, aeroplane. You know, making sure you put your own mask on first before you can help other people with their masks. You know, make sure you're looking after yourself and your well-being and not burning yourself out before you can help others to be successful in their business. So it's been an absolute delight to um, welcome you today, um, Carla, and hear a bit about your story and your secrets. So thanks so much for joining me. I know, I really appreciate it, Liz, and uh, I had a really good time today, and um, yeah, I hope that your audience got a lot out of um, the insights we shared. Amazing. So, um, yeah, and um, join me for the next episode of the How to Spark Success series, where I'll be talking to more entrepreneurs, thought leaders and business owners and uncovering some of their success secrets. So thanks so much from myself and Carlo. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Okay, bye.